Hello friends, welcome to the world of Lean Six Sigma. I am Mohit Sharma, your mentor and coach on Lean Six Sigma issues and problems. I have been receiving this request to make a case study on inbound call center. So let us begin with the case study. In an inbound call center, there is a huge problem of customer queries resolution TAT at L2. Team is taking on an average 39.5 hours to resolve customer's queries against a target of 24 hours. This is leading to huge customer dissatisfaction and financial penalties for L2 team. Company has decided to do a Six Sigma project and a team is formed led by a quality black belt. The first thing that the team did was to create a project charter. Project charter has six elements, business case, problem statement, goal statement, scope of the project, milestones and team charter. Business case should be defined by answering this question. What will happen if the project is not done? If this project is not done, the huge turnaround time at L2 team level will increase customer dissatisfaction and there would be huge loss for the business. The next is the problem statement. Based on the last six months data, it was observed that the team is taking 39.5 hours to resolve customer queries. And the goal statement is to reduce customer query TAT at L2 from an average of 39.5 hours to average 24 hours by June 2017. The scope of the project was inbound L2 queries and out of scope was rest of the departments. Milestone defines the overall timeline of the project. So define phase will start on 14th of March 2017 and it will end on 30th of June 2017. A DMAC approach was taken by the team. So define, measure, analyze, improve and control are the five phases of this project. In the team charter, sponsor was AVP inbound team. Champion is Senior Manager Inbound Team. Mentor is Mohit Sharma. Process Owner is Ops Manager. And then the team members are Devinder, Kanika, Karan, Gagan and Richa. The next thing that the team did was to create a high level process map. Because there were some cross functional teams involved. So everybody should be on the same page about the process. So this Scopus is created. C stand for Customer. O stand for Output. P is Process. I is Input. And S is Supplier. So supplier of information is customer only and what input is supplied is inquiry detail, customer issue or a contact information of the customer. So these all are the information which are provided by L1 team to L2. Then the process starts when the call is received by the agent. If it is a basic query, it is resolved and the call is closed. If it is a technical query, it is passed on to the L2 team and then the L2 team, they have to research and provide a resolution. The resolution is sent over the email to the customer and once the customer acceptance comes, then the case is closed. The output of this process is query result and who is the customer? The customer is the one who has sent the query. So customer is customer here. Then the team created army chart in which the sponsor champion, the quality black belt, ops manager, the green belt, the project manager and SMEs, their roles and responsibilities are defined. A stands for approver. These guys will be approving these phases. I stands for informed. R stands for resource. And M stands for member. Resource is the one who has technical knowledge like an SME. So that person becomes a resource. And member are the people who will take part in the project and they will help do data collection, implementation of the solutions and things like that. Team also created a communication plan in which Events are decided like project team meetings, stakeholder review, Six Sigma review and project update. And what message will go in those events? Who will be the audience? What is the frequency of this communication? And whose responsibility is this? And what is the medium? Medium of the communication, which is whether it is a face-to-face -face meeting or an email. Then the next big thing that the team did was to get into a room and do a brainstorming session. The head of the fish represents the problem, which is the effect. So the effect is high turnaround time and there are different causes to this effect. Like in process, tedious process to obtain information, manual process, and there were less licenses on the floor with people have to do research. Under people, there were lack of process knowledge and careless mistakes were happening. Under mother nature, too many calls during weekend, you know, that was the problem. And under machine, there were outdated systems, network was down, printer was not working, things like that. And under SME, they were not available, uh, no internal skill development program, 
and SME or TL are not available on the floor. Sometimes they are there, but they are not available on the floor. Let me take you to Google and show you how to calculate sample size. So there is a sample size calculator which is available. So the first thing that we have to enter is confidence level, which is 95%. So most of the Six Sigma projects are done at 95% confidence level. Then you have to enter the confidence interval. The confidence interval is say for example, five. And the population size, irrespective of the population size, sample size calculator will give you a sample size, but you need to put the population. So for example, 10,000 queries come every day and the sample size needed is 370. If you look at the population, if I increase this population size to 1 lakh, now see what happens on the sample size needed. It is 383 only. If I increase another zero here and then we see the sample size, it is 384. So irrespective of the population, sample size doesn't change much. So if you have taken a sample size of approximately 384, your confidence interval is 5 and confidence level is 95%, you are sorted. So you only have to measure 384 samples irrespective of the population size. So after looking at the sample size, team has collected 384 samples on turnaround time in column C1. So then in column C2, so which agent has performed on these cases and what is their turnaround time? What is the tenure of the agent is in the next column and the search in multiple screens is required yes or no. And then which shift the team performed morning or the evening shift and the column C6 contains the data in which after turnaround time is reported like when the project was completed, what was the turnaround time after that? I will begin with the first thing that we have to calculate. Here in column C1, we have project Y, which we have to check whether it is normally distributed or non-normally distributed. So to perform that activity, we will go to stat, basic statistics and graphical summary. Click on graphical summary, you will get this kind of a page in which under variables, you will enter turnaround time. Click OK. p-value of 0.132 which is greater than 0.05 suggests that data is normally distributed. So once the data is normally distributed and the x's which you have to test on this data are discrete, we will use one-way ANOVA test. So let's begin. So the first x is agent which is as I said is discrete. So we will do one-way ANOVA test. And the path for that is Stat ANOVA one way. In response, we have to enter column C1, which is turnaround time. And in fact, we will enter agent. And we will click OK. If you look at this session window, under analysis of variance, we have p value of 0 0.000 which means that when the p-value is less than 0 0.05, it suggests that this x is a contributing x, means agents are contributing to turnaround time. So if you look at this data, the significant difference is that agent 1 and 2 are taking lesser time compared to agent 3, 4 and 5. 3, 4 and 5 are approximately taking 40 hours and agent 1 and 2 are taking 36 and 37 hours. Moving on to the next one, which is tenure of the agent. So tenure of the agent is also discrete. There are three discrete variables here, zero to one year, two to three years and greater than three years. So let's see how it goes. Path for ANOVA test remains the same. In response column, we will have turnaround time, which is that. And in fact, we will change this to tenure of agent and click OK. P-value of this analysis also shows that it is a contributing X because the P-value is less than 0 0.05 here. If you look at the tenure, when the tenure is 0 to 1 year, the average or the mean is 40.795. 
and when it is from 2 to 3 years it is 37.443 and when it is greater than 3 years it is 36.25 it means as the tenure or as the experience is growing the cycle time to process the queries is reducing the next is search in multiple screens so let us go and test that under factors we will choose search in multiple and click ok p value of 0 which is less than 0 0.05 indicates that this is also a contributing factor when the search is not on multiple screens it is only taking 35 hours and when the search is on multiple screens it is taking 40 hours and the last one is shift i will press ctrl e to reach to the last screen and instead of search in multiple screens now i will enter shift and i will click ok shift is also a contributing x because the p value is less than 0 0.05 so morning shift is taking 37.84 hours and the evening shift is taking 42.038 hours it means morning shift is taking lesser turnaround time so all these axes which we tested are significant so what we have to do is now we have to identify and solve these significant issues the first x was agent so we said train agent 345 to bridge that knowledge gap tenure of the agent was second x and why it was a problem because there used to be certain exceptions or difficult situations where agent with lesser tenure they have to go and ask the SMEs and that takes a lot of time so we mm -hmm. thought that let's create a case study based scenario on exception or difficult situation the next one was search in multiple screens so it was a lot of time waste you know when the team has to search in multiple screens they have to toggle they have to wait for the next screen to come up and that takes a lot of time so creation of an automated platform where entire information is available on one screen only so that was one of the solutions which was implemented and the shift was one of the issues why it was an issue so there were some tls or smes which were available to resolve the query in the morning shift but they were not available in the night so the support has to be extended so that's the other solution that we have provided so this team implemented all these solutions after the implementation of all these solutions team was able to improve the entire process and a new turnaround time has been calculated which is in column c6 so now we will create a control chart and see whether the process is has improved and is in statistical control or not here we will create imr chart as the data is continuous and we have subgroup size of one if you want to know more about control charts and imr chart and expr R chart so please refer to my other videos on the channel under variables i will enter after tat and we will click ok so all these data points are within the control limits and the overall average or the mean is 22.080 hours so it means the team has reduced the overall cycle time from 39.5 to 22.080 hours so with that we are going to end this case study so i hope you like this case study if you really like this case study please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends i will see you in my next upcoming video till then take care bye bye